escaped because of the Lord's rebuff to their plea. But those people mentioned in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 were called workers of iniquity who were told to depart from the Lord. It was not so with the foolish virgins. It does not mean that the Lord did not know them as they were, but rather he did not know them intimately as those who were married to him by spiritual revelation of the word, as a man and his wife are joined together in holy wedlock, cf. EPH.5, 25-32, EPH.4, Reverend 19-7. The door was shut when the last of the wise virgins went into the marriage. The wise virgins making up the bride wife of Christ were sealed to await the mysterious utterances of the seven thunders for their rapture. That's right, the bride is now being united with the bridegroom in spirit and word. She is now looking beyond the second realm of the spirit into the word, the Shekinah glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostle John was a type of the bride wife of Christ who heard the utterances of the seven thunders. He was told not to write them down because the revelation was for the bride at the end of time. Matt.25, 13, Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Let us take heed to this warning and be watchful while there is still time. If we are born again of the Spirit of Christ, let us quickly come into the Word and be joined with Him in spiritual wedlock to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ and be ready for the rapture. Certainly, there will be some who will come so close to the revelation of the Word and still miss the rapture because they do not hear the right word in the right way. Such are the Branhamites who keep wandering around in the wilderness of religious confusion with the shout message that they have heard. They have come out but they have not come to the revelation of getting into the promised word and be one with the word groom. Yes, they have heard the message but they have not heard it right. If they have heard it right, they would have received specific instructions to enter into spiritual wedlock with the word. Yes, we need to be one with the word not with the message. Without the word of God for this present hour no one can go into the rapture. So, take heed what you hear and how you hear that you might have the faith that was once delivered to the saints. At this present hour God is dealing with the virgins, especially the wise ones who have met the bridegroom and entered with him into the marriage. Now, there is no doubt that, in the very near future, the foolish virgins will wake up to the fact that they have been careless with what they have possessed and realize too late that they had missed the rapture, which they had looked forward to. And with the two witnesses appearing and prophesying in Israel, they will know that Daniel's 70th week has began for Israel. With that knowledge the foolish will also know the identity of the Antichrist. They will have to stand firmly against the false church, whose leader, by that time, will have deceived many political and religious leaders of the world in his ultimate move of bringing the world under his subjection. The foolish virgins will realize that they will have to die for their faith, but they are not the only Christians which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, Rev. 7.14. Obviously there will be some born-again Christians in the denominational churches who will be shaken, somehow, by what they hear and see in that hour of time. Besides looking at the signs and wonders performed by the two witnesses in Israel and their death, in the hands of the Antichrist, and their resurrection after three days and nights, the continuing message of God through the 144,000 Jews, Revelation chapters 14 and 18, will shake them out of their religious allegiance to their denominations. These Christians will also die in the hands of the Antichrist for their faith in Christ. They will resurrect and stand together with the foolish virgins before the throne of God as the Christian group of that great multitude which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, reverence 7 to 9. However, the tares, religious unbelieving Christians, make-believers, impersonators, who are being gathered to be burnt will continue in their religious activities with the false church and its image right until Christ Jesus returns physically for the battle of Armageddon at the end of the Daniel 70th week. Remember, during the Great Tribulation, salvation will no longer be offered to the Gentiles. As I have mentioned earlier, there is one other group among the great multitude, standing before the throne of God, not featured here in this passage of scriptures. They are the many faithful Jews who do not know Jesus Christ but they will die at the hands of the Antichrist during the great tribulation period for holding on to the word of God. In Revelation chapters 15 and 20 they are shown standing before the throne of God with those Christian martyrs. But the 144,000 Jewish servants who are exclusively sealed by the Holy Spirit for their ministry to the nation of Israel will not be harmed by the Antichrist, they will not be killed. They are ordained to nourish Israel, the woman of Revelation chapter 12, until the Messiah shall return for the battle of Armageddon at the end of the Great Tribulation, cf. Esau.26, 20-21. In the age of regeneration, when the kingdom of God shall be set up on earth, the 144,000 will serve the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife as eunuchs in his temple set up in the city of Jerusalem for the nation of Israel. Read Isaiah chapter 56 verses 4-5 and Matthew chapter 19 verse 12. Verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Verse 16, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Verse 17, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, 
and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Yes, the great tribulation saints are Christ's redeemed people, they are his people. They will be thirsty and hungry during the period of the great tribulation because they will not be able to buy or sell for refusing to receive the mark of the beast and to worship its image. They will also suffer the heat of the sun because the weather will be changed drastically as God deals with Israel, cf. Esau.30, 26. But their sufferings will cease when Christ Jesus dwells with them and they with him. Because they are not the overcomers who are made ready as the wife of Christ and taken up into glory before the great tribulation, Rev. 321, they shall not sit with Christ in his throne during the millennial age of regeneration but shall serve him day and night in his temple. This temple is not the millennial temple set up in the city of Jerusalem for the nation of Israel but the temple of Christ's body, his wife who sits with him in glory. However, when the new heaven and new earth come into being these tribulation saints will be part of the holy city, New Jerusalem, CF. Rep.21 and 22. In the eternal age, all the redeemed born-again children of God, who shall be given a spiritual, glorified, body, will form the holy city, New Jerusalem.